Hey guys, it's Jason. And Austin. We have a special production today. Uh, well, special. We're doing a Rubik's special. review. Special. Uh-huh. A Rubik's review. Why did I say that? We are teaching you how to solve the Rubik's Cube. Um, I'm doing it on the Diane Guhong version 2. Um, um, this is a Cubesman. No, it's, um, uh, Feng Shi, Shuang Ren, V1. Well, anyways, um, basically, please, please don't get mad at me. I'm going to start with the beginner's method. Um, Austin will be teaching you F2L, OLL, and PLL, and I'm teaching you beginner's method, since and that is a method I know. Jason will be learning along with mm -hmm. all you guys. <laughs> and mm. he will be learning along with me. Yeah. Nailed yeah. it. <laughs> Nailed it. And so... This is going to be in multiple different parts. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So basically, I'm going to teach you the full-blown method of the beginners. beginner's method, and then Austin's going to take three different parts to show you F12, OLL, and PLL. Well, I might do OLL and PLL in the same part. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, true. Because, uh, yeah, anyways. Yeah. Um, so first off, what we're going to do is we're going to teach you notation. Now, notation is key for algorithms, um, some people don't learn notations, which is a bad thing, considering like if you're solving a mega mix and it oh calls gosh. you to do like URL, U prime, L prime, L prime, or something like that, which isn't actually the case. It's U, R, U prime, L prime, U, R, U prime, L. Anyways, I'm given a bunch of interesting things that... The, the, the notation on the mega minx makes no sense. Yeah. But we're not talking about mega minx. We'll talk about yeah. that later. Maybe. We're talking about three by three. So um, there are six different... Uh, notations you need to learn. Well, nine if you count the metal slices. Oh, well, I guess, yeah. But um, this segment here is called U. So this is U. And so if I say U prime, That's that means you go counterclockwise. counterclockwise. And so if I say U, you go clockwise. See? So U, U prime. U2 is when I turn the upper face twice. It doesn't matter which direction. Exactly. You could do U prime two, which doesn't matter because you're making a 180 degree turn, which moves pieces in the exact same pace. It looks like I didn't even do anything, but I promise I did. But anyways, um, so this segment here is U, and this is R, okay? So this is U prime, and this is R prime. So R prime going counterclockwise. Now if I turn it this way, this would be doing L prime. But if I turn it this way, then it's L. Yeah. And this is R prime. So it's just the way the left and right work. Notation, it's um, like the front face is F. Uh -huh. And it doesn't matter what color it is. It just matters what, what is facing you, what is facing you, what's on exactly. top. and Yep. So anyways, I'm going to run through all of them real quick. So this is R, okay? And you can go back and review this as many times as you need to. This is U. This is F. This is L. This is B. For back. For back. And this is D, for down. This is the down face. This is the up face. This is the back face, the front face, the right face, and the left face. Now, um... We're going to go over the next step, the scramble. Um, so the scramble is basically as you would expect. It is scrambling your cube, which if you're watching this video, your your cube is cube probably is already scrambled. Probably already scrambled. My point is that, and um, you really can start anywhere. It doesn't matter what corner it is or what edge or anything else like that, just as long as you do it. So um, we aren't really going to do an algorithm for this, spec or this first spot. It's what I call an intuitive solve. Intuitive means just kind of log you, or logistically you it thinking yourself. it yourself. Exactly. So what we're going to do is locate the white face and put it as up. So put it on the – basically the have it white facing up, the top. And what you want to do is you want to look for edges that correspond to the center. So white and a white. So a white edge and a white center. And you want to make them create a cross so you have all white edges facing it. And it doesn't matter if they're solved with these centers yet later. I'll teach you how to do that. So I found like three of them right here, which happen to be the case. So I'll turn this one up, and it's matching. See, because it was down here, and I moved it up. 
And so um, I'm just going to keep doing that, and I just want to move white pieces into positions. And you'll get better at this later. Um, as you can tell, I'm pretty decent at it. But anyways, so I got the white cross, but you notice how none of these edges, or sorry, none of these ed edges correspond to their centers. Basically, what I want to do is I want to have, oh, oops. Well, look at that? I want to have all the edges paired, excuse me, paired with the centers, okay? So orange, orange, blue, blue, red, red. So I'm just going to flip these two real quick. So disregard this. So let's say you have all of them mixed up, okay? And it doesn't matter if you have three, two, one mixed, or you can't have one mixed up. If you have two, three, or all four mixed up, it doesn't matter. So what you want to do is you want to turn the right side 180 degrees so it doesn't really matter. Or whatever so, side it's on. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. So you bring the edge that you want to swap with the other one over down to the bottom layer. So notice how the green is here and it needs to match with green. So what I do is I bring this green white edge down to the bottom layer and then I turn this upper half until this green matches with this green edge white corner or edge. See? So now it's green, white or green, green, white, okay? And then I turn it up to where it's up there. But what I did is I brought the blue edge down as well. So you gotta keep an eye out for that. So when you switch two, then you bring another one down. So now what I wanna do is I wanna pair this blue with its blue center. So what I do is I find the blue center, but you wanna keep the white on top, remember that. Some people have a problem with that. Keep the white on top and turn this twice to where it matches with it. Sometimes it could be one, it could be three, it doesn't matter. As long as you match this edge, the white blue, with its blue center. And then you turn it up. And now the, you notice the cross is back in position and the blue and the green are solved, but now you have the red and the orange and the orange and the red. Now you do the exact same step for um, solving the two. So I bring the, this, uh, the white red down to the bottom layer and then I turn this segment twice sometimes two, three, doesn't matter, and you match the edge up with the center. And then you turn it up, but notice the orange-white is here, so I bring it down. And this is solved, but then this isn't, the orange-white. So what I do is I turn this bottom layer, this upper two segments, to where this is matching with the center, or the center and the edge, and I turn it up. And so now what I've gotten is the first cross, per se. But this is a solved cross, it's not an improper cross. And so you have all the edges paired with their centers and so on and so forth. Next step is the most vital step I'd have to say with the first layer, and that is corners. Now, you want to find any corner that has a white on it. And corners have three different faces on them. Like this has white, green, orange. Okay. And so the first step when putting a corner in is you want to find its edges, its corresponding, or sorry, centers. So the white, green, orange, you want to put that in between the orange and the green centers since it has a green and an orange, all right? And so basically what you want to do is you want to turn this corner until it gets up here. So I'm going to teach you an algorithm, and I'm going to state it every single time I do it so you can get it. You're going to have to audio listen, or listen to this audibly because I... I don't have any uh, paper to write this down, or we might be able to put it in notations, but I'm not sure. So basically what you do to get this corner up here, you might have to do this multiple times. I could just do this and put it up, but I'm not going to because I'm just going to do the long process to show you guys. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an R prime, D prime, R, D. Now this corner moved up to here but it's not solved yet. It's permuted, but it's not oriented yet to where it's solved. Uh, that's a big term. I'll explain it later. But, um, or I'll explain it. Yeah, he'll explain, explain it. Exactly. So basically, we need to do this a, quarter, or a total of four more times. It's facing you. You don't have to know that. Just keep doing this algorithm until this white is on top. So I'm going to do this again. R prime, D prime, R, D. R prime, D prime, R, D. D, R prime, D prime, R, D, R prime, D prime, R, D. Notice I have this corner solved with its edges and the white spot up top. So I move this corner from here up to here, all right? And I'm going to do this again. So you may be faced with a problem where the corner is up top here. It doesn't matter. Do the algorithm again. It's as if this was up here again. Oops. 
It's as if this was up here again. So this is equivalent to this. So just put this back in again, r prime d prime r d, r prime d prime r d, and just so on and so forth. So I'm going to do this again, but it doesn't matter if it's up top here. Just keep doing this algorithm. r prime d prime r d, r prime d prime r d, r prime d prime r d, r prime d prime r d. See, and now it's up here and it's in position. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find another corner, a three-phase corner, with white on it. So let's see here. I found the white, blue, red. Okay, and so just explaining it again, what you want to do is you want to find the the um, the two centers that have red and blue. So like this corner has red and blue in it. You want to put that in between these two colors. So if it was like green and orange, you want to put it in between the green and orange, like it is. Okay, or sorry, green and red. I'm not thinking correctly. So the white red blue you want it in between these two centers N enough with that so now what I want to do is I want to put this up here again and I'm going to do uh, the algorithm again r prime d prime r d 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 and I could have done something a little slower or sorry much faster than that which is basically notice how this can go up to here but I can do a slower version just going like this and trying to put it up in there, doing it like six different times. But notice how it's facing this way. I could just turn this away, bring this down, turn this back in, and turn it back up. But th th this is just the faster beginner's method, I guess you could say. But I'm teaching you a slower version. So just keep doing the algorithm R prime D prime R D. But you guys got that now, right? Okay. So now we go on to the next step. And so what we want to do now is notice how this looks solved, all of this layer here. You've done the first layer. Now what you want to do, yeah, exactly, congratulations, first layer done. But you still have two more to finish. So now what you want to do is you want to do what we call um, edge, uh, it's not really a name actually. So um, what we're doing is we're taking an edge from this bottom layer and moving it up here. So there's going to be two different things that I have you do. It's a different variation on both, one for the right side and one turning it for the left. So this one I'm going to have to move to the left because this is orange-blue. And so basically whatever edge it is, if it's on the left side, you have to oh, – that's not the left side. So if it's a blue-red and it's on the left, you do this algorithm. And so um, the blue-red moves up to here is what I'm trying to do. So I do this algorithm. I want to move it away. So I do a D L D prime L prime or wait. So I want to turn it away. So I do a D L D L prime D prime and then I move the cube to where the red is facing here. Or you could just do an F prime D prime F. And so notice how I move this up to here. And that probably doesn't make much sense. As of now, now, but I still have three more corners, or sorry, three more edges to put in. So I'll explain it one more time. If, if need be, you can uh -huh. rewind and redo replay it. As yeah, many replay times as, as many need, times yeah. as need be. So I'm going to do the left side again. So what you want to do, you can do a faster method like I do and just do this. Or. You could do this, but I'm not teaching you faster methods, so what do I keep doing this for? So the uh, you want to match it with the center. That's another big key. You want to match this edge with the center as well to where it's corresponding. And then you do the same algorithm. So it's a D, L, D, L prime, D, F, or D prime, F prime, D prime, F. And so I move this, or that edge that was here, from here to here. That makes no sense, but I'll, I'll do it again. So um, now here comes a corner where it's on the right side. So this is a little easier. So now what you do is you do D prime. Okay, so you want to match it up with the center, or yeah, the edge with the center, and the green on the, it doesn't matter where the green is. So the edge with the center, and you don't want to put any yellows in. Yellow is bad because yellow is last layer, and you want that last layer. You don't want to put yellows in like this is right here. Yellow is evil for now. Mm -hmm. Yellow is evil right now. So if you do white to yellow, you could have a different color scheme, and that doesn't matter, but it applies the same way as what I'm doing now. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it away from where it needs to go. So I'm going to do a d prime, r prime, d prime, r, f, d, oops, what did I do? I'm not used to doing this slow. Let's restart. All right. So um, I guess I moved it here. So we're moving it to the right. So you do a d prime, r prime, d, or d prime, r, uh, d, f, d, f prime. Okay. Did you see how that went? And so now you have the first two layers done. I'm going to repeat that again just so you guys get it. So just excuse me as I move this edge out. Here is one going to the left, okay? So it's a D, so D because it's going clockwise. So D, L, D, L prime, D prime, F prime, D prime, F, okay? Now here's one for the right side. Oops, that's not right side. I'll make it right side. So let's make it right. Um, so here we go. So um, this needs to go here. So to put an edge that is on the bottom to the right side, what you want to do is you want to go D prime, R prime, D prime, R, D, F, D, F prime. Okay? And so I just repeat it again. You can go back and watch that as many times as you want to. But you have the first two layers done. Fantastic. That's good. Now, last layer. Um, what we're going to do is we're doing the cross again. Like we made the cross here. We're going to do it here. But you have to do something to where you don't mix up this whole segment here. And so I'm going to teach you another algorithm that doesn't scramble any of the other segments of the cube, any other cubies. And this algorithm moves edges. But I'm going to teach you some properties of these, this, uh, the different cases you can get on last layer. Same algorithm every time, it's just different cases you need to know what to do. Now, in this case, I got a bar. So if you have a bar, you want to have it going horizontal. You don't want it vertical like this. You want it going horizontal like this, okay? And um, what you do is you do this algorithm called F U r u prime r prime f prime so notice these got in position this basically moved here the equivalency of it it didn't but it did so anyways I'm, i shouldn't confuse you like that but it makes an l after you have a bar it makes an l and so you do this algorithm again but you always want the l on the top left it can't be here it can't be like this if it is then just move the cube like this but it can't be like this or like this. It has to be like this on the upper left segment like a uh, backwards L. Okay, so it's a backwards L. And so you perform that same algorithm again. F, U, R, U prime, R prime, F prime. And so it moved all of these centers, or sorry, edges while solving it without keeping or without mixing up any of this. And that's kind of an algorithm. So now what you want to do is you want to get some centers paired up with edges like we did before. So the these are paired, these are paired, these are paired. But now I'm going to do that up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this upper layer here until I see that two of these, like right now, are matched up. So one, two. Then there could be two different things that can happen with this 3x3 three three segment. And so I'm just going to explain one easy one. So here's the first pro or first thing that is kind of average. It's more of a 50-50 equilibrium between these two. And so I want to have one of these facing the back like this, okay? And I want one of these on the right side. So basically when I'm holding it, this is here on my right hand, and this is here on the back half. So what I do is an algorithm that switches these two edges, okay? So you want the blue here and the red here, but you want the, the edges facing here that are solved. So you do an algorithm called R U R prime U R U two R prime U. 
And so what it did is it solved this edge and center, this edge and center, this edge and center, and this edge and center. Now we have last layer corners. But I'm going to show you that other case real quick that happens with the 3 by 3 so or with the edges. So basically what it is is it's two edges across from each other like uh, hang on like I'm going to show you if it happens. There it is. So basically where you have an edge here and an edge here and you have no other spot where the edges there's two matching adjacent to each other. Like this, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. It's just the exact opposite. Okay, so the blue, blue. So what you do is you don't hold it to where one of them's facing you. You put it off the side. So one's to your right, like this, and one's to your left. Okay, and so you do the same algorithm that I showed before when these two are adjacent, but you just hold these two on the left or the right side and the left side. So you do R U. See, so R U R prime U r u2 r prime u but notice nothing really looks solved but technically there is something this is solved here but you want two adjacent to each other so you turn it and you look around and you see if there's two edges and centers paired like there is now and you do the exact same thing as before you hold one of the edges or one of the solved edges to the right and one in the back if they're adjacent and then you do perform the algorithm again R U R prime U R U two R prime U. Okay? And so now what we're going to do is last layer corners. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be permuting these corners. So basically what permuting is is we're moving pieces, corners into positions, but we aren't solving them. We aren't actually turning the cubes to where they're solved with like orange, yellow, blue. Like this, it looks like it should be solved. It's in correct position, but it's not oriented properly. And orientation is when a corner is oriented or turned into position to where it matches its adjacent centers. Like this yellow should be here, this orange should be here, and this blue should be here. There's also permutation, and permutation is having a corner or moving corners into positions to where they're solved. So like this isn't, this isn't, or this isn't, but this is. So what you want to do is you want to perform an algorithm that switches these three corners. But that's it sounds real hard, but it's really simple. Now what you want to do is you want to find one of the corners that is solved on the bottom right, but like this here. So it's not solved, but it's permuted. So basically it's in between its proper corners, or sorry, its proper edges, or uh, centers. So the blue, orange, yellow, you want it in between the blue, orange, yellow um, centers, like this is. And so what you want to do is you want to perform this algorithm, and it's called, I'll just explain it to you, and it switches these three. So it's U, R, U prime, L prime, U, R prime, U prime, L. And so what it did is it switches, or it switched these three, but this isn't solved, or this isn't solved. But notice how this looks solved, and this looks solved. That is perfectly fine. Sometimes you need to do that three to four different times. So I'm going to do it again, although this is solved, and I'm going to teach you this next step that it's unrelevant to what is right now. So um, I'm going to do it again. U, see, U, R, U prime, L prime, U, R prime, U prime, L, okay? And now this looks all jumbled, but this is still permuted correctly, but it's not oriented. So I'm going to do this probably two or three more times in order to get it to where these corners are solved. So you want to get it to where these corners are in between their proper centers. So U, R, U prime, L prime, U, R prime, U prime, L. These aren't solved again. I think I have to do it one last time. So U, R, U prime, L prime, U, R prime, U prime, L. So now I have all the edges, uh, corners permuted, but I still need them oriented.
And so now I'm going to orient them by performing this algorithm. So it's basically like putting a corner from here up to here, but it's a different variation like when, when you first started solving it. So anyways, I'll explain it to you. You'll see it, and it'll be really simple. The, the, the whole step is really simple. So but what you do... A lot uh -huh. of people mess it up because of one little mistake that we'll go over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Trust me. So what you do is you do R prime, D prime, R... D, R prime, D prime, R, but you have to turn it back, D, okay? Now what you do is you want to have another one of those permeated corners down at the bottom right, like here. You want to set it back on the bottom right, okay? And you do not turn the cube, you turn just the upper face. Just the layer, not the, not the cube, exactly. You want to turn just the face. Do not turn the cube and then get mad at us. Yes, because you will accidentally mix up your cubes. So and it's up will, here. And we will block you. Uh, well, you, as long as you don't spam us. Uh, so anyways, um, this corner is over here. So what we do is we turn the face. Turn the face only. One, two. Doesn't matter. It could be right there. See, if it was right here, then you just turn it once to where it's on the bottom right. But what you do is you do R prime, D prime, R, D. You might have to do this multiple different times. R prime, D prime, R, D. R prime, D prime, R, D. One more time. R prime, D prime, R, D. And notice this segment. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's just W. And you've solved your 3x3 three three if you if followed step by step. If you followed all the steps, you have now solved your 3x3, three three, and you have beaten the world's hardest puzzle and the world's most selling toy. Marvelous. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if we have a chance, we will um, post these on our uh, uh, you know, description. Mm -hmm. So here are... Okay, so um, my brother was listening on to us, and so he developed this algorithm sheet that you guys can and look that, at. That is D prime. What? That's supposed to be. D oh yeah. So um, here, let me see the pencil real quick. So it's R prime, D prime. When you see a line like that, that means D prime up top. R D, and that can take up to four times if needed. Okay. Or all up to six times technically. D L D L prime D prime F prime D prime F T L What is that? Anyways, we'll we'll <laughs> we'll set these up a little bit later. Ethan is, you know, nicely suggested this to us. We will help him out later with these algorithms he accidentally messed up. He's my brother by the way. But that's all right. Anyways, um we thank you guys for your time. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Um or not review, solve. Tutorial. I'm mixing my words up. Tutorial, exactly. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you, we were successful in teaching you. If not, we're sorry. Just watch again. <laughs> um, watch many, many times. Yep. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed. And have fun solving your new cube. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Mm,